There are many reasons to come to British Columbia, Canada. For me, it's to look at this. Porsche invited auto riders to this lovely spot outside of Victoria to check out two new variants of the Panamera. There's the blistering fast Turbo SE Hybrid, and the one I'm going to start with, the one that looks different from the standard Panamera, the Sport Turismo. It's performance with an extra dollop of practicality. A lot of people will call the Sport Turismo a station wagon, but technically, wagons have very vertical back ends off the bumper. Whatever you call it, it's good looking. Squint your eyes and you can see a chopped Cayenne SUV here. The shape allows for an extra suitcase in the trunk, as my friend Perry Stern discovers. What do you think, Perry? A lot of space in here. Yeah. Plus, the lift over is lower since there's no lip. Not bad. Yeah, that'll work. Very practical. Just what you want from your Porsche. It's a family car. Sport Turismo adds something else, uncertainty. Buyers now have two Panamera bodies to choose from. The tiebreaker might be the back seat. Gran Turismo gets something that other Panameras don't, seating for five. Porsche calls it four plus one seating, and uh, here's why. Actually, it's not bad. Sport Turismo is available with four powertrains. I drove two of them. The most powerful is the Turbo Sport Turismo with its four liter twin turbo V8 packing 550 horsepower and 567 pound feet of torque. I also covered some serious ground in the four e-hybrid Sport Turismo. It's a plug-in hybrid. The 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 is paired with an electric motor that's integrated with Porsche's PDK automatic transmission which is an 8-speed. There are no fuel economy ratings at this riding, but Porsche claims a pure electric range of 31 miles. That's using the normally optimistic new European driving cycle. The e-hybrid does a lot of those hybrid -y kinds of things. It pulls away on electric power, then the gas engine kicks in when needed if it's not in EV mode. The system is seamless, and it's a quick car. Zero to 60 spools up in 4.4 seconds, according to Porsche. A Prius, this is not. Total system power is 462 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. If you're familiar with Porsche's Sport Chrono package that adds extra performance, it's standard on the e-hybrid, but quite different since one of its modes is all electric. In Sport Plus, the e-hybrid uses electric power to actively charge the battery, so the electric motor is always available to chip in extra punch. Now, moving on to the twin turbocharged V8 turbo model, it, like all Sport Turismos, run with all-wheel drive. Every family should be so lucky to be driving one of these. Not that it's a good example for the kids to experience 3.4 second zero to 60 runs. The four wheel steering on this car keeps things stable and agile. It's unflappable at speeds that would get me a lot of attention from a Mountie here in Canada. As expected, this car is very quiet, very comfortable, great for long road trips, just like the regular Panamera get extra cargo space. All but the base Sport Turismo get a new three-chamber air suspension that keeps body movements to a minimum. Porsche Active Suspension Management is standard across the board. The spoiler deploys at certain speeds and angles, and it even changes angles when the standard panoramic sunroof is opened. Now, as powerful as this is, this isn't the fastest Panamera. That would be this one. The new Turbo SE Hybrid, available in saloon style only, at least for now, it's the fastest Panamera money can buy, and you'll need a lot of it since it starts at about 185 grand. It's a bargain compared to this, the legendary 918 Spider. The Turbo SE Hybrid's drivetrain is inspired by this supercar. Love technology trickle down. Normally I just pop the hood to show you the powertrain, this time I've stripped the body. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. Start with a 550 horsepower twin turbo V8 with a hot V setup, then add a 136 horse electric motor, that's it in red there, bolted onto the eight speed dual clutch transmission. All wheels are driven. The liquid cooled lithium ion battery can be fully charged in as little as 2.4 hours on 240 current. 
We get to test the dynamics at the Vancouver Island Motorsports Circuit. We're going to do six laps, so the first lap will be an introduction lap. A twisty, compact track with lots of vertical change. <sighs> don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up. There is plenty of power. Zero to 60 flies up in 3.3 seconds. And remember, electric motors have loads of low-end torque. A lot of elevation changes, a lot of tight turns. The instant and rich torque is perfect for this track. A car this big has no right to handle this well. Wow, this is amazing. A lot of people are gonna diss the PDK transmission. It's always in the right gear. This is my favorite gearbox. The crisp shifts and mind meld ability of this transmission must be experienced. On a track like this, I'm happy to use this over a manual transmission. Besides, Porsche doesn't offer one in the SE Hybrid. This car feels so much smaller than it is. The electronic stability control lets the car slide just a little bit, but it's very, very controlled. Wow, 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 wow. If you're looking for 911 level performance from a vehicle that's good for a double date, this is your ride. Ah, well, that was too short. This is all I could get to in the brief time I had with these cars. If you're interested in seeing the interior and all of the features available in a Panamera, check out my full review of the Panamera Turbo. It offers a more well-rounded look and shows off many of the details, like the user interface, that apply to both of these models as well. In the meantime, ponder which Panamera body style you like best. I would be happy to tour Canada in any of these. Uh, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.